All right, that seems to be the theme for this tournament, is that I get back late after every break. Come on, let me in. My apologies. It's probably a good thing I didn't play that anyway. How you doing? I'm Fingers. This is the Digital Poker Felt Part 4 for this series. I appreciate all my subscribers. Make sure if you're not, if this is the first time you're stumbling in here, click the like button, the notification button, you know, like, subscribe, all that type of stuff. Make sure also to leave comments down below. Tell me what you like, don't like, not just about my play, but the overall channel itself. I designed this so that you could kind of see every hand from beginning to end through the tournaments. So I break them up into one hour segments. Every time the tournament takes a break, I keep it more bite-sized that way. Again, 60 minutes being bite-sized. But I just thought it'd be easier to manage. Originally, I thought from the viewer perspective, but I'm finding that definitely from the rendering, the post-production, Again, my name's Fingers. I live in the Tampa Bay area. I can't resist a suited hand, especially this deep. This one is definitely probably not advisable. I haven't looked up to see. Let's see. Big blinds are 2,500. Eh, let's see if we open up this notification we're still in 71st out of 290 the average is 172 we got 449 I guess we can be a little silly I mean definitely we don't want to be re-raised or shoved on where are we at? Uh, we got 179 big blinds Got called and then re raised. The tournament we're playing in is called Crazy Eights. What the heck? Well, I definitely did not want to be re raised, but now a caller right after that, that's insane. What does everyone have? That was a terrible call there. Really don't like the call and then the call of him. But I think the King Jack offsuit was the worst out of all of them. People see the two painted cards, and King Jack never plays well. All right, so fresh stack coming in, so people are still entering this tournament. Let me click that. Get the browser looking proper in here. Uh, let's see. Come on, get up to the top. Level. So we're at level 20 right now. They stopped the re-entries and the rebuys at level 25. 581 total has been the entries. What does first place pay now? Still over 300. So again, if you've been with us since part one, you know all this info. Again, if you've just stumbled in though, the Crazy Eights tournament. It's a deep, super deep stack tournament. You start with 88,888 as your starting stack, but the blinds are still 2550. Let's check that. Still got a little laggy going on. Part three is still rendering in the background. That is definitely not helping 
the issue with the software, with the computer. Let's see. Pretty sure I do not have the best hand, but I will peel to try and get lucky. Like that. If he bets again, I'm going to shove it in his face, or he's going to shove it, and I will just call if it gives me the button. Hopefully he does not have pocket tens. Oh, that was the worst bluff ever. Oh, I'm enjoying this tonight. As I was saying in one of the earlier parts of this series, I was thinking about going up. Again, I live in the Tampa Bay area, so we have a number of card rooms around. There was one of the card rooms tonight has fairly cheap tournament going on at 645. I think Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, let's limp in. And so I was thinking about going up there, but I decided to spend my time with you. The other option I had, a lot of Thursdays, there's a poker game that some friends of mine, for years now, we've had the Thursday night like home game. But last week when we played, since the whole COVID thing, we were playing online for a while doing the home game online. We were using some other different software and including uh, Zoom. So that way we could still gather, we could still chat, we could still see each other. And then in the other window, we had the poker game going. <clears throat> I actually enjoyed that. Uh, call. I think the rest of my account my accomplices, my my friends, a lot of them are digitally, I don't know what the kind word would be, make up the word, insert it there like a Mad Lib. They did not care for the online experience as much, even with the Zoom and all that. So they've... They've taken now that 2020 is over and people are starting to get vaccinated and go out more. They came up with a new place. It's like years ago we used to have the, the game on Thursday nights in the kind of underground in a cigar shop. Then it got moved to another cigar shop. Then it eventually wound up in one of the guy's homes. But like I said, after the whole COVID thing. Uh, 36, let's go 7,000. We recently started playing in a bar slash restaurant. But the waitress slash bartender, she was kind of rude. And there were a number of people. Do I shove it? Well, let's just play it slow. They'll never see it coming if I hit it. Uh, yeah, I didn't like her comments nor her demeanor. Let's just go pot. Now let's go 55. All right, I still have outs. What could he have been drawing to? <sighs> Didn't hit any of them. All right, check. Let's 
So I definitely should have shoved on him on the flop, not on the turn. And I think, with him being all in, I mean, in earlier parts of this series, I was telling you that this site, the replayer, you don't normally see a hand if somebody beat you. So I'm not sure. I know I could see my hand. I'm not sure if they could see my hand at the end to see what I was bluffing with. Nine would be pretty. But there's two clubs out there. Let's just not chase a gut shot. Try and play smart, not lucky. I think I'm going to use up all my luck earlier. Let's see. Yeah, I'm not sure if it actually displayed it or not. I don't see it here. Uh, pair of threes. I mean, they know I couldn't beat a pair of threes, even if they couldn't see my hand. Two pair of queens and three. Well, actually, they know I couldn't beat Jack High. Jack High! Go with Jack High! I don't know if that's too old school of a reference or not. Once upon a time, again, if you're new to poker, you won't know this story. If, if you've been around poker, watching it for years on ESPN, uh, World, uh, what was it, the Travel Channel originally, Fox Sports, all those, there was one year where the guy, it was Limit Hold'em, the Limit version of this, and the guy who called down uh, James, what was his last name? The guy that wrote the book, Positively Fifth Street. And I know it's got like the Irish, Scottish sounding last name. I don't remember. I, I believe his first name was James. He called the one guy down with a queen high. The guy, I guess, misread his hand, thought he called him down with Jack High and thought it was hysterical. And when he went outside on the break, they were still filming him and him yelling, He called me with Jack High! Can you believe it? So the other night, I was playing here locally in a tournament at Derby Lane over in St. Petersburg, Florida. And there was this one guy. Again, we're playing No Limit Hold'em, not Pot Limit or Limit. And the guy actually did manage to call the better down with jack high and actually won the pot. So I jokingly started going, jack high! Nobody seems to remember the reference or gets it anymore. I don't remember the poker player's name. It was like the one time... Uh, how many years ago was that now? It has to go back to 2003, 2004, maybe? And him just yelling about the jack high. So later on in the tournament, when we were down to two tables, this guy was making some ridiculous calls still. Like one guy would move all in with pocket nines on a board that had... I don't even remember what was on it, that totally missed his queen jack. And he still called off his chips with queen jack. And, of course, you know, he sucks out, gets a queen or a jack, and wins. He stays in the tournament. So later on in the tournament, I was referencing him and calling him Jack High still, and the other guys at the table are like, no, 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 he called with a queen high. We can't believe he called with a queen high. I said, no, you weren't here earlier in the tournament where I saw him call a guy down on the button with jack high. And they're like, what? You know, they were amazed if he did it with queen high. I said, no, the most ridiculous part is he called the guy down with jack high 
and the better couldn't win on the button. I mean, not on the button, um, on the river. Uh, why would you do that? Twenty five percent of my stack. Lines are now four thousand. I want to activate my time bank here. All right, let's think about this. Oi, oi, oi. Pretty sure I probably should fold this. Uh, going to the charts, though. They say call. All right. And again, when I reference charts, I know I didn't reference it yet in the beginning of this video, but throughout the whole series, I've been talking about um, GTO. GTO strategy. Preflop GTO. And, wow. We actually won, and he even had a club. Thought for sure as crap there was going to be a club on that river. All right, that still puts us where somewhere around over 250 big blinds. Let's see, what would damage? Let's just go... I usually love to limp my small blind, but with this stack... Let's start pushing people around when we can. Instead of being sneaky. again. I'm not even going to bother looking at the charts. GTO pre-flop charts. I'm doing so well as I am. Why mess around with a bet that big? Oh, blinds up again. Got a suit of days. Does that mean anything to you? Let's go with thirteen. He might shove the stack that short. Yep. Yeah. And we've got a call now. Come on, lag. Cut it out. Eh, he actually had a hand, too. off, get rid of some of the lag. Again, why are you raising so big? Why are you afraid to play a flop? It's 
So you kind of shove. I don't think this is part of the lag because I still see the aura around his thing moving. But them giving me my buttons to fold, that is part of the lag. I think once it finishes rendering part three in the background, maybe it'll speed up a little bit. Won't be as clunky. And maybe for your viewing pleasure, maybe I should actually follow through and start by downloading the software instead of... I mean, that was one of the things I loved about it, though. I didn't have to actually download a piece of software. I could play it just through any browser. But if it interferes... Alright, Queen 9... Now, I don't think that would be appropriate from, well, we would have had him shoving on us again. Yeah, see, Queen 9 is definitely a fold there. Favorite hand goes in the muck. See, I'm not going to be like these other idiots that have favorite hands that they have to play. I know it's a bad hand. I play it when it's appropriate. That's like one time... Again, if I haven't introduced myself... Uh, Previously in the beginning of this video, I apologize. My name's Fingers. I'm not a professional poker player. I'm actually an unemployed radio guy. Got laid off during the whole COVID thing. So in radio terminology, they call it, you're on the beach now. So until the next job comes along, I'm entertaining you and myself by doing stuff like this. And visiting the poker rooms around the area. Because again, poker is a passion of mine and that's why I started this channel. But there was a time where the radio station sponsored a poker tournament. This is back during the poker boom. And because I was a guy that was a guy going out playing poker a lot, I knew how to play poker. I got recruited as one of the bounties. So they even made us up these t-shirts that had these logos on them. And they almost like a sport type of thing, baseball, whatever. They wanted to know what number I wanted on the back. And so I told them a three and a five. And they're like, why? And I was like, that's my favorite hand. And they all laughed at me. They thought I was crazy and I was kidding. I was like, no, no, no. Technically, I go, my favorite hand is five tray of spades. And they all looked at me like I was insane. I get into this bounty tournament. Now, technically, I'm part of this whole sponsored thing. Nobody ever manages to take my bounty out. They're basically telling me I'm supposed to lose this tournament. I went on to win it accidentally. I, I don't want to say the players were that bad. But I went on, and then they they took my bounty away from me to give it to somebody else because technically I wasn't supposed to win. Let's just go a little tiny bit smaller since we're in such early position. Because technically we should have a much bigger hand right here. He shoves, I'm calling. If 
he shoves unfolding. There you go. I won some antis and big blinds. So this hand's a free roll. All right, lag, go away. I need to see my cards. Reshove. Does this allow? Might not have been big enough to allow him to reshove. out for him and he got max value. Nope, he didn't get called there. That is a long way to chase though. And then put in the value. Again, blinds going up every eight minutes. Now they're up to six thousand, three six. Min rays and a shove. And I really, really wanted to play this hand. All right, show them. And the parking lot hand actually held up. <clears throat> All right, real quick, let's check the standings again, because there's no way in hell I'm playing that hand. Still in 71st, it's like that doesn't change. Is this thing even updating? Let's close that and go look at the lobby again. Still paying that much for first. All right, folds to me. Let's just go. One of these guys might think I'm making a position move. Or if they saw me earlier raise and then call off with a six suited. That is not the flop I'm looking for. That's better, but dangerous. King Queens got there. Jack 10 got there. But I have to call. All right, enough with the lag. There you go. Calling raises with 10 6 off suit, and now he's probably complaining. Mm 
If it limps to me, uh, I was going to say, if it limps to me, I'll actually play. But the 10-6 offsuit, that reminds me of another hand many years ago. A friend of mine, this was in a bar game years, year, 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 I don't remember how many years ago. A long time ago. A long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Um, I had raised preflop with pocket aces, which one tends to do. He calls my raise, and I'll tell you right now what his hand was. It was queen five off suit. The flop came out ace queen five. I bet he just calls. Another five comes off on the turn. I bet again. He shoves all in on me. Oh, hang on. Wait for the end of that story here in a second. Six is 15. Let's go 21. Punish the limper. So, again, now he shoves on me now that he has a boat, but my boat's bigger. I call. Obviously, my full house beats his full house. And he couldn't stop complaining about it hours later. And I've said this before, that people misremember how hands play out. And I mean, he was telling somebody how I sucked out on him. Uh, if we're going to do it, let's do it. He's going to call there. All right. If you drew to a straight or two pair, you got me. Hang on, get back. There we go. Wow. Pocket threes. Okay. And I thought we'd lost most of the donkeys early on. And that we were starting to get players that were bluffable. Again, the crazy eights tournament, it's only $3 to get into. So it's not like you're playing against the top players in the world. Again, I'm not advocating that you should play it. I'm just telling you, if you're watching this, why some of the players are playing the way they are and why I am making the moves and calls and not bluffing in places where sometimes maybe you should, even if you are following GTO preflop charts. There's... G some of these people are just unbluffable. They only see the hand that they've been dealt, and they don't register what you might have, what the board now makes. They're so first-level thinking in their own head. Or in their own hand, I should say. Uh, but again, I had to go up and correct the guy. I was like, no, no. I go, what are you talking about sucking out? I had pocket aces pre-flop. I go, you're the one calling a raise with queen five offsuit. You got lucky but unlucky at the same time. It's not a suck out. Or even, okay, there's this other chick that playing around town. I run into her quite often at each of the different poker rooms. And she loves to sit there and scream because she's a loud person. Maybe it's a Tampa thing. I don't know. She loves to scream at people all the time about how they got lucky and how they sucked out and yelling at the dealers. And so this one time she was saying, oh, yeah. She's like, you beat me because of this. And I'm thinking, no, you beat yourself because of the way you play, the hands you play. Okay, good example along the lines of that story. I did see a meme, a little cartoon meme out months ago. I may have even told this prior on one of the videos. I don't recall if I did, and you've heard it already. I apologize. 
but it's really stuck with me in the aspect that there's this guy on a bicycle and he's got a stick and he's riding the bicycle along. He reaches forward. He jams the stick into his own tire spokes. He goes head over heels. Now he's bleeding. He's on the sidewalk and his only comment is F dealer. Again, getting back to that chick wanting to blame everybody else and how so many people blame their, that's their lucky dealer, their unlucky dealer, their lucky seat, their unlucky seat. It's like, no, you're the one jamming the stick into your own spokes, man. Oh, I didn't even notice the blinds went up. I thought I was calling a raise, a min raise there. If I had known, I might have punished him. How much did he put in? All right, 76 looks like the biggest. It's only 10% of my stack. Now he called. All right. If I'm going to do it, let's get all his chips in too. Is this the lag or what? Come on. Uh, Jack 8 wins it. Jack 8 wins it. There's that 10 6 again. Oh, and he got there. Alright, I'm still sitting pretty. That guy was willing to call their shoves with his jack high. By that point, screw it. Alright, is the lag so bad I can't even open up the notification? Ah, oh, there we go. Still says 71st. That can't be right. I never move in position. Is everything else update on this but that? I know this number's been updating. Alright, let's not focus on that anyway. Let's focus on getting the Jack High guy. And see, to avoid a lot of that issue, with him limping, even though he would have won. If I had raised, it would have prevented those two from coming in, and he may have folded. So I misplayed that by not watching, paying attention. Again, I take the fault. It's my fault. No. Not even. Let's make a note. Let's say loose ten six. And then this guy, come on, In some ways, I wish this tournament would hurry up and end. I mean, not with me busting out. I, 
never want that. But I'm more fearful of the the RAM and the computer and the software of it crashing before we get to the end. The way it's acting. Wow. To shove with 3.7 and just flop it. All right, come on. We must be past level 25 by now. Yeah, you're lying, we're still connected. Oh, and it also allows only eight re-entries. Hmm. Level 25. So is it at the end of level 25? Until blind level. The way I read that is, it should be done. So however many people we have here now is what we should have. Oh, that's bad luck. It should have been 888 for the Crazy 8's tournament. Is everybody stalling now? Are we on some kind of bubble? How deep does it pay now? That's the structure. I don't want the structure. All right, 162nd place will make five bucks. We've bought in twice. Let's say that we need seven to break even. That means we'd have to finish at least in 81st place. Is he still stalling over here? Yep. It says until level 25, but it looks like it must be through level 25. And now he's going to buy in and just sit there and stall. Oh, almost yanked the plug out of the wall. Needed to hydrate. All right, we're up to 10,000. I do not think 10 6 suited should work under the gun. Is everybody stalling now? Are we that close to the money? It says two ninety five. You'll see this especially online. As you get close to the money, these people will use up all their time banks, especially if they're short stacked, as a way of trying to hope somebody else busts before they do so that they can sneak into the money. A lot of the bigger tournaments, when you're live, they will start dealing hand for hand. Well, I guess actually, even in online, they do hand for hand, but once you're in the hand for hand, doesn't matter how much you delay, you're just, everybody's stopped until your table's done. Uh, da -da -da. Actually should be over 700 big blinds still. So I can still kind of go off the reservation as far as these GTO preflop charts. Not that I'm not looking at them again. 
if you've tuned into this channel at any time at all, I do try and stay within the GTO preflop chart ranges. I'm not using any special uh, calculator, or what do they call it? The, uh, I said it in part one, uh, there's a name for it where people are using certain types of software. not And I'm not talking about the HUDs. There's another type of software out there now where you can punch in what your cards are, what the range of your opponent's range should be, what the flop is, what the turn is, and it'll sit there and calculate for you what you should do percentage-wise. So I'm not using anything like that. I've just got some charts in front of me and just referencing them and feeling free to not pay attention to them when I do not want to. I'm still leaving a lot of my human element in it, making the ultimate final decision, and obviously making all decisions post-flop. Like, I'm pretty sure this is a terrible... raise under the gun even though it's suited. Yeah, definitely. I mean, my charts go as high as 80 big blinds, so I can't tell you for... Well, I guess there is a sliver there for raising under the gun in the 8-7 uh, suited. So, there's your sliver. And the sliver is probably, what, 5 or 10% of the time when you have this hand from under the gun. Will I make it? It's almost a min raise. I was going to say you should call it. Top pair. Let's just do a half pot. She could have some straight draws. Pair of sixes, flush draw. Is it going to give me the check button? That's a terrible card for me. But it looks like it would be in my range. So if he, yeah, let's say. All right, I'll pay him off. If he got there, he got there. Well, there you go. I guess it's a good thing that I checked on the turn. It allowed him to bluff, making me more money. The unfortunate part is now everybody at the table sees that I'm raising with an 8-7 from under the gun. All right, so my blind or my stack just went bigger. Let's see if it moves me up. No, it still says 71st. There's something broken here. That can't be right. Let's see, what amount could I bet to get him to fold a king high? No, that didn't work. So, I still didn't give him back as much as he gave me.
I was going to say, if it folds around to me, I'm shoving on him. But now... What's my note on him again? Is he the jack eye guy? Come on, open up the note. Limp calls off, stack, jack high. Yeah. Uh-oh. It moved me. Let's call. Come on, get out of the way. Fine, I'll raise if that's the only button I can access. That put me back where I was. How do I move back there? Ah. Sit here. There we go. Ooh, getting dizzy. Spinning around the table. Alright, come on, hurry up. It's getting close to break again. He's gonna call. Stay seating out if you're gonna act that way. This is the perfect type of hand for my range. And if he has one of his jack high hands again, he can't call. Maybe it's not the software. Maybe it's not the browser. Maybe it's my computer. Maybe I just need to go out and get a better computer to do this. You think? If you think that would solve the issues I'm experiencing. Again, I'm using a Mac uh, Book Pro right now. Please leave a comment in the uh, discussions down below, in the comments down below. And while you're at it, make sure to click like. Tell me what you like, dislike about the videos, click the notifications, the subscriptions. But definitely, if this would be something that would solve this laggy issue and other recording issues that I'm having, again, to have a better polished product on the back end. I mean, that one, there was that series that I had where the software crapped out. And I didn't even know it until I went to go post-production. And I don't think that software liked the other software, the re-entry, rebuy, changing tables. So that's why it's become this now of using this different software. Yeah, I gotta call you. You got a jack? Ooh, a boat. So, I don't think I'm necessarily outplaying everybody, but I am definitely running really well. So again, this ends part four. Make sure to come back. Join us for part five. So we're going super deep in this tournament. It's the Crazy Eights tournament. So far, I am a luck box. If you want to know when the next video will be posted, Make sure you are subscribed and you've clicked notifications. Otherwise, you might have to guess. You might have to keep coming back and visiting. Why not let it do the work for you and let you know? So again, part five on the way. Thank you. Also, make sure to like us on uh, Facebook too. Digital Poker Felt. Become part of the tribe, the Felt tribe. Thank you.